Hello, uh, my name is Jose Luis Merino. I am working in La Paz University Hospital, and a cardiac electrophysiologist. I'm heavily involved in mostly in ablation, but also in other kind of procedures. Okay, the, the aim of the Power Fast 3 trial was a two-fold, because we tried first to prove that uh, high power short duration was safe, or at least as safe as uh, a conventional approach. And the second was that uh, we tried to prove uh, that high power short duration <laughs> may result in better efficacy in talking about less AFib recurrences or atrial uh, arrhythmia recurrences at one year follow-up. All, always compare with the conventional way of doing RF application. Yeah, the, the um, study design and the patients that we enroll in the trial is, is simple. We enroll patients with uh, both or either persistent or paroxysmal mm -hmm. lateral fibrillation. There were no significant exclusion criteria apart uh, for prior uh, FE population or recent mm -hmm. cardiac surgery, for example, among others. And then the design of the trial was also simple. We randomized one-to-one -one, uh, patients to both arms, conventional or high power short duration RF application, and there a uh, patient under, under, undergo ablation, and the following day, they uh, had a, a esophageal endoscopy taken. Then patients were followed uh, for one year with both uh, uh, on-site visits, on-demand visits in case they have uh, symptoms, and daily ECG transmissions. That is one of the strengths of this uh, 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 study. Although here in, uh, in the ERA Congress, we just presented the acute results of safety and acute efficacy results. The main findings in the study uh, were first, as I said, uh, we have to consider the aims, so safety in one side and efficacy. In terms of efficacy, we found that uh, PBI was, uh, of course, uh, achieved with both techniques in almost all uh, patients in all veins, with no differences between the two groups. In terms of first pass isolation, surprisingly, we found that uh, it was more easily achieved with a conventional approach than with high power short duration. Uh, other uh, efficacy or uh, procedural related in points like uh, procedural duration and uh, fluoroscopy, for example, there were no significant difference between the two uh, groups. In terms of uh, safety, we found no differences in esophageal damage. It was uh, uh, quite similar, around 6% in both groups. And in other complications, again, there were no differences between the two arms, although we had a trend, slightly trend, towards a more tamponed and more systemic embolism in the high pulse or duration arm. The main thing, uh, how much is, is that uh, both techniques, uh, high pulse or duration, can be done in terms of uh, efficacy. In terms of esophageal damage, it appears to be safe. That is, it was one of the concerns and by using this technique in the posterior wall of the left atrium. But still there are uh, pending issues, like uh, this uh, trend of potential complications that need to be clarified, probably with more research and uh, other trials. Yes, uh, we're in the process first of, uh, because we were presenting acute results, so now we, we need to, to, to wait until we have the follow-up, so in order to see if uh, uh, these results in at least similar recurrences, but it may be that uh, we have, uh, we find less or even more, because maybe uh, this technique is very fast, but produce uh, less um, deep lesions. So we have to wait for that. In addition to that, I think that we need to further explore the safety of the procedure, especially not the esophageal that appears to be safe, but the tamponade risk and the embolic risk.